2019, 2020, uh, and then the latest imagery in 2021, which is a few months old. Uh, you can see the an airfield has been built. Uh, there's a bunch of large cleared areas. Uh, there's the beginning of a port. Um, and so just significant, get this going here. Our typical data sources second here. Uh, then we're gonna zoom into our development that uh, would make it hard to generate a terrain that's accurate to this type of area without uh, automated extraction, uh, just because our typical data sources don't hold all this info for us. Okay, so now I will jump into the demonstration. I'll just get this going here. Okay, so this should be running now. And uh, what you're looking at is just a Chrome browser. I'm gonna connect to the web server on our, on our world server. And we will see a view of the earth in a second here. Uh, then we're gonna zoom into our area of interest. Uh, and you can see, hopefully recognize the same town of Palma there. And then this triangular area is the uh, natural gas development. Um, we're just gonna build a small piece of terrain in this example, uh, just for time's sake. And we'll talk about the timing and stuff in a minute. Um, this is a very early um, kind of prototype for us. We don't have all of our interface built. So um, I'm gonna be using basically the area on screen becomes the request and we can go down and select uh, this pre-configured LuxCarta process. And when I hit confirm, it's gonna fire off that entire automated process that we just talked about. Uh, we don't have a progress bar yet, so what I'm gonna actually do once that goes is just show you kind of the internals quickly here. Uh, just to show the kinds of things that it's doing. So we're going layer by layer, um, accessing sort of ortho imagery, clutter data, uh, elevation, you know, all these different layers of terrain data are being kind of requested and received back from the Bright Earth server stored on our side. Uh, and when that's all ready, we're going to kick off that TerraTools process that has been pre-configured and, and is just waiting for data. So here it comes back. We have a preview of the data that was sent. In the background, it's actually running in TerraTools. But what I can do now is just kind of show you uh, the data just for a kind of inspection. So you can see in white are all the buildings. And then uh, the green areas are the vegetation. Okay, so, and then the other thing you should notice here is the, um, there's actually the uh, source imagery in the background. So um, we have our own base map that's actually outdated and this imagery that the extraction was done from is actually much newer and you can see pretty significant development has happened uh, even in the town. Uh, so again, working from the most recent data certainly helps us uh, generate a, a useful and, and representational terrain for the location. All right, so we're gonna jump now into VBS4. Uh, and here, of course, you can see the, the base terrain we've been talking about. So there's a representation of the whole globe in VBS4, um, but we're gonna zoom into our little area of uh, terrain that we've just generated. Uh, and you can see it here. As we get in a little bit closer, you'll start to see the details. We have high resolution imagery. There's a high resolution, uh, what we call a surface map or land cover data that was extracted from the imagery. That's uh, being used to position all of the uh, areas of vegetation. And we'll just come in and take a close look at that. Uh, so again, you know, Pete talked about this. The, um, this part of Africa is pre-configured to have a certain type of vegetation in VBS4. I didn't have to do anything except say, you know, an area should be a forest. Uh, and it takes care of kind of filling in the detail. Uh, and as you've noticed there, of course, we have a building for every one of the footprints provided. We've generated a building. We've automatically and randomly assigned appropriate types of textures and, and surfaces for those. Um, and then we've also added in uh, a road and along the road we've automatically or procedurally just generated um, some uh, uh, utility poles and some lights. Um, so now what I'm actually gonna do, so this was kind of the live kind of generation portion. Um, what I'm gonna do is unload this data and I can do that just by going to the server and actually removing some files. Uh, much easier than VBS3 and VBS4, we actually have kind of a live data concept for the terrain server. Uh, and what we're gonna do now is actually load in the full area that we built for this, this test. And it's, um, you know, rather than a, a, just a number of minutes or however long that, that took to uh, just show that small tile, we're gonna bring in um, 
uh, roughly a 30 by 30 kilometer area that took about two hours or three hours to build. Uh, and we're going to do this layer by layer. So when it was published by the server, of course, all the layers came in together. Uh, in this case, just to kind of walk you through it, we're going to bring in uh, each layer separately. So this first layer I'm bringing in is actually the um, surface map, as we call it, or land cover data. And again, that's controlling where the dirt areas and grass and trees should, should be placed. Uh, and I'll just come in close to the ground level here, and you can see uh, just how detailed this is. Again, kind of harping on the point that the uh, the vegetation base globe uh, biome system is, is uh, richly detailed and uh, saves us a lot of time when we're building terrain. Uh, and it's, it's also worth pointing out that in the next step, we're going to show imagery, but we don't even have to bring in imagery. I mean, this type of terrain can be good enough already for training. Um, we'll talk about buildings and the other features next, um, but imagery is actually optional. So you can bring in high-res imagery if you have it. It makes sense to use it a lot of the time, uh, but you don't have to. So here that's coming in now. This is our 50 centimeter imagery. Uh, and you can see, obviously, there's certain details that start to show that can be important, like the airfield surface uh, and other kinds of uh, recognizable uh, features in the terrain, and we'll just come back down to ground level again and compare that to uh, the purely procedural approach before. Okay. So now the next step we're going to take is we're going to bring in the same type of layers again, but this is going to be lower resolution data, and it's going to fill in our area of interest. So this is our high detail area of focus, uh, but there's still a larger area of 30 by 30 kilometers that we want to fill in, so it kind of completes our, our play box. And that's what I'll do now is bring in the surface map for that larger area. This is lower resolution data that was produced much faster. Uh, and you can see it sort of meshes right in with that irregular shape of our uh, high detail area. You can see there's sort of a salt marsh and the different kinds of land features become much more clear this way. And finally, same thing with imagery. So 10 meter resolution imagery, uh, it blends right into the high resolution imagery and uh, works perfectly fine when, when viewed at a distance. Okay, so now we're gonna come in and take a look at this, um, this built up area here, which is the, uh, the housing section of the natural gas development. And you can see it has a very different style from the town we looked at previously. This is all brand new construction. It's all the same materials. And so we've actually put in sort of a geo, geographically based rule set in TerraTools that expects this data to be uh, using the same kind of uh, uh, building generation rules. So we've set everything to use red rooftops and then even made a few exceptions for the green rooftops. Um, but this was still automatically generated uh, according to what we saw previously. So now we have a really accurate representation of this area, uh, sort of building for building. Um, and it was generated just about on the fly uh, within hours. So you could imagine getting imagery from you know yesterday and running that imagery through a process like this to get you know very accurate representations of what is actually actually on the ground there. This is I think two or three months old. This current imagery. Um, and now because we actually have this airfield feature, we're going to take a look at that. So we'll come in close and look at the 50 centimeter imagery, uh, and you can see it looks great from the air uh, at, at altitude. But as you get in. It doesn't really hold up if you're doing, uh, you know, ground-based or kind of flight operations off of this airfield. So we have a new technology or a new capability in, in TerraTools to uh, generate airports procedurally. So you'll, I'm going to bring that in now, and you'll see the few different layers load in. <clears throat> and it was done relatively quickly in less than an hour to generate this. Uh, I didn't have to trace out every shape. We're, we're generating generating most of that automatically. Um, we just kind of assign a few a few details to a, a linear feature and then let TerraTools generate the detail for us. Uh, and you can see here it, it holds up pretty well if we get right down at ground level. And again, of course, that's optional. It's, uh, you, you may prefer to have the imagery there in certain cases where you're not necessarily using the, um, the airfield at ground level. All right, so now we're going to come back into the town and just take another look over here. Um, one of the things that we did here, just it's kind of a relatively quick uh, process, but the I talked about the procedural um, uh, utility poles, just kind of a common thing to do. We don't have that in the geo data. We've just assumed that near roads and uh, uh, settlements, there's going to be a certain number of these. And for every so many of them, we've assigned uh, it to be a, a light source. You can see the, uh, 
the light bulb on the pool there. And as we change the time, just to show this again, I know Pete showed a little bit of this already, but we can change it to nighttime. And we'll just let the, there's actually an eye adaptation kind of feature happening here where the, uh, so as if our eyes are adapting to the, the quick change in light. We'll just let it change over the next few seconds here. And you can see um, the light posts, or a certain number of the utility poles have lights on them and are casting light on the ground. Um, and we'll just move the camera here in a second. And you can see uh, the town is kind of lit up now. So this is just kind of a really quick uh, example of what we can do now with lighting in VBS4, which is looks really, really nice compared to uh, how VBS3 wasn't bad, but um, I think we've made some pretty big improvements here. And we'll just switch things back now. Back to daytime. And yeah, so I mean, this terrain is now, you know, completely ready for simulation. So the roads, AI can follow the roads, they can move between the buildings. Uh, we talked about the biome vegetation, that's, you can fully interact with that, you can destroy those trees, AI can navigate around them. And uh, so just really quickly here, we're just going to do a kind of a quick tour of the, the terrain at sunset here to show the, show off some of the air, airfield details and, and some other things. Yeah, th thanks. All. It, it's a fantastic demonstration. And so just to confirm, like, first off, there was no hand editing of anything. Is that correct? You were all kind of doing this in, in a separate tool set, right? Yeah, that's right. So so there was a configuration step to get the Terra Tools project to understand the type of data that would be coming from LexCarta. But now that that's set up, I could give that to you and you could use this without any hand editing. You could just hit your browser, choose an area to be built, and you would get something you know similar to what I have here. Right. And, and, and it sounded like you were talking about hours, not days, in terms of timeline. I mean, and really, it just depends on the size of the data. Obviously, you need to do some processing. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So this, the terrain that we're looking at here was a matter of hours of, yeah, of processing time once, uh, once I hit go on the web browser. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're about to start answering questions. But I, I mean, I just want to finish up and just say two things Earl, while that kind of runs in the background. So the first thing is that... Um, we are building uh, a product around the world server that we'll be announcing later in the year, um, probably. Uh, so yes, you have the world server that gets shipped with VBS uh, 4 and VBS Blue IG, but it's part of a larger framework uh, for doing more enterprise terrain management. And that's what you're going um, to, to see us uh, talking a lot more about later in the year. Um, I don't want to spoil too much now, but uh, it's really exciting the kind of capability we're going to be offering uh, and not just specific to the VBS engine, right? So I, I want to make that really clear. One of the reasons we kept TerraSim separate is so they could work with multiple engines. Um, they're quite agnostic in their approach. Uh, okay, so um, that's the end of today's presentation. I'm about to start answering questions. Um, we have a, a, another session tomorrow where we will be uh, looking at 21.1. Earl will be back uh, doing some VBS geo editing and making that terrain come alive. Uh, and I'll be going through some of the key features in 21.1 at tomorrow's session. So please do come back. So I'm not going to be offended if you drop off now, but I do intend to start to um, walk through some of these questions. I mean, Ollie, if you're three to VBS four open flight as uh, and we can simulate things like um,